Sagittarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late October into early November 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we can dip our toes in the energy and see what's going on for the lovely Saggies. I hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. As you can see, I'm in the season spirit over here, my friends. You get to have your cards read by Dino of cups this week so let's get it going here for Sagittarius my guys what's happening for my friends and yeah we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card then we'll get into the full reading itself and at the very end I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on which is always interesting but let's get it going here let's rock and see what we got for Sagittarius my guides talk to me what's happening with my friends Nice and quick here, please. Thank you. Okay, very intellectual, mind-based type of energy here when we have this card. Now, the, sim the symbolism is kind of comical when we see like a monkey dressed up like Shakespeare. But to me, this is very sharp intellectually. So whether there's a lot going on in the mind, we're just going to have to break this down piece by piece. But I see a very, very active mind here. Before we get into it, though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the October subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. It's the last week to get your name in for that. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo, into the reading. Let's talk about this card a little more and see what we can glean from it. So symbolically, like I said, we have this monkey. It's dressed up as Shakespeare. It's contemplating its own life because it's holding that skull. There's a typewriter in the background. There's like numbers and binary code and stuff like that. So to me, this is similar to the Ace of Swords. Like it is extremely intellectual. So for a lot of you, maybe your mind is firing on all cylinders. Maybe you're thinking quite a bit. A very active mind or overactive mind could be a possibility when I see this, which could be spirit saying like, hey, you might need an outlet for all of this mental energy here. And I've been seeing it in all the fire signs this week. Like there's an overabundance of mental energy and action showing up. Now, this can be very good. I would say for anyone cross-watching, when this is here, whether it's a Sagittarius like consuming knowledge or it's just their mental faculties firing on all cylinders, like you're not going to pull the wool over any Sagittarius eyes in this time. Like this sees all type of energy so we're just going to put it down right there let's get into tarot i feel like i could keep getting messages from that card like it feels very intense but as i always say the first card it doesn't make or break the reading it's just a little footnote let's get you three cards in the upright before we get it into that intuitive juiciness so let's shuffle it up one time for saggy and while we do let's talk about last week's reading because it was a good one we start again a nice little shift of energy. Last week's reading was titled A Massive Win. So I always say wins come in all different shapes and sizes. I really hope you've, you've had one. And that energy could still bleed over into this week. So it was very claimable. But we're going to see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you. Because we could be seeing your vibe. Could be seeing someone you're connected to. But let's get it going here. What do we have for my lovely Saggies, please? Three cards for late October into early November. Yeah, wow. All right, so there's like an even more of an overabundance. And I was seeing this energy for you a couple weeks ago, too. We have the Nine of Swords and the Page of Swords that popped out together. Okay, so all this mental air energy is showing up heavily, my friends. Let's get that Nine of Swords tucked in right over there by the page. Let's get one more card out here for the main part of the spread. Thank you. Okay, seven of wands. So we have the fire air combination here, which, you know, sometimes I say that could be good, but sometimes it could get a little out of hand. It could be volatile. So let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, then we'll get into the juicy intuitive stuff. So at first look, first glance, I look down here at the spread. Once again, we have swords, so air, air, and just like we were seeing here, there's a lot of mental energy happening here. So if that's not you, Sagittarius, it could be someone you're linked to. And we do have the possible stress here in the middle. We'll have to see what's up. But elementally, when we mix the fire and air, because the wands, swords, I always say it could be explosive. It could be volatile. You know, that could be good for moving things forward, taking action or pushing things in like the 
motion of progress, but it could also be like unpredictable. It could be explosive. It could be volatile. So we'll see what's up with that, especially with that seven of wands on the back end. Like somebody might feel like their hands are cuffed in one way or another, but let's go through one by one. Position number one, we have the page of swords. Now, this could just represent an air sign you're connected to. So Libra, Gemini, Aquarius pages could represent someone younger than you. It could even represent children. All pages are communicators. All pages are students and messengers. So whether this is a communication that's coming in or a talk that's coming in, that's a possibility. But the thing with the Page of Swords is that it's very defensive in comparison to the other pages. Okay, so whether it's someone who's like, yeah, well, I want to talk about this, I want to say this, but their guard is up. The Page of Swords is also the watcher of the tarot deck, okay? So I don't know if you're feeling defensive or your guard's up in one way or another, but there could be someone or something you have your eyes on or vice versa. Maybe there's someone like checking you out in one way or another or watching. Now, moving to the center, we have this nine of swords. So if that's the case, like this is someone that could be stressing quite a bit. The Nine of Swords, you don't have to really be an expert in tarot to understand what this means. You see that person in bed, they got the hands in the face, they're losing sleep. So I do say in this time, hopefully your sleep schedule's not being affected. Hopefully you're not having insomnia. Once again, anxiety, stress. These are big energies connected with this card. So maybe there is someone you're linked to that is like really stressing quite a bit or very much on edge or just having a hard time sleeping. This is a very paranormal card as well. So just know that you might be feeling and taking on energies of those around you or those that you're connected to when this paranormal energy starts to show up. But the, I'm, we really need to dive deeper because with all this air energy and now the fire and this, there's just a lot happening. Hopefully this isn't somebody's like mental state being a little bit of a mess, but that could be possible here. Like somebody would really stress on something out or it's been like that since the very beginning of this spread. Okay, That's the one thing I was feeling absolutely for sure. Now, moving to the back end here, we have the Seven of Wands. And this card can be very good. This could be somebody with a whole bunch of determination. This could be someone who's like, yeah, whatever happens, whatever comes down the pipeline, I'm going to fight it. Nothing's going to stop me, which can be very good. It's like me against the world type of energy. But this card can also represent somebody feeling trapped could be someone that feels cornered. This could represent like problem after problem, situation after situation, issue after issue. Like you see this person, they're like fending it all off. So whether it is tests or problems or issues, like it could be showing up with this card, but this person has a lot of fight within them, okay? And I do have to say like, it can be someone that feels trapped or imprisoned. So when we have the nine of swords with that, it could be someone that feels like they're a prisoner of their own th thought process or mind when we have all this energy connected. And I'm still very skeptical with the, all this, fi the fire and air mixture, because once again, it could be volatile. It could be something that has like, it could go zero to a hundred or it's just almost uncontrollable. And the energy I'm already feeling off this, it just like feels like a lot. It's like chugging like a train. It's like do, 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 do. The energy is very much like, it's not still, it's not calm just yet. So we really need to dive deeper on all of it, Sagittarius. Let's do that. Let's jump in and clarify. All right, let's get a good shuffle here from my Saggies and see what's happening for my friends, my guides and spirit team. What's going on for Sagittarius? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation and I'm just giving you mine. What's going on that page of swords? And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Sagittarius, you drop it down in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, page of swords time see what this possible communication could be about or this want for communication. Could be someone you want to have a little chat with. All right. All right. I'll take it. Did you see what that card did? I don't know if the camera's low enough, but it like popped out and landed on my hand like this. Yeah, makes sense. We have the three of swords in, in the upright. That's how it popped out and laid on my hand. So yeah, this is someone who is like really hurting or going through it with the three of swords. This could be someone that feel, <laughs> all right, if you're dealing with anybody that is like very defensive or they're putting you at arm's length or there's any degree of separation, this is someone whose guard is up because they're afraid to be hurt, 
Okay, that's the big energy I'm picking up here, right? With the three of swords and this page one, the uh, page of swords, pardon me. Because with all the energy, now this could be someone that really might want to emotionally vent to you. So with all the mixture of the air and the fire, watch out for explosive talks, explosive messages where someone starts spilling how they feel. And it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Even your reaction might be a little volatile as well. So Hopefully it's a nice calm venting session, but there is somebody that wants to get these feelings out in one way or another with all this fire and air. So watch out for the explosive talks. But once again, if there is somebody that's acting distant, acting cold, this is due to them putting up a wall because they're afraid to be hurt. Okay, so if that's something you're going through, maybe you're like, all right, well, I don't want to get too emotionally invested, or I'm going to keep my distance over here. Um, I don't want to experience this three of swords energy. So it could be all those messages. It could be none of them. It might just be an air, an air sign you're connected to that's really going through a tough time though. But there is someone hurting or afraid of that. So let's keep moving over. Let's see if we get any other elements showing up here. Because the vast majority so far is air. Even with the oracle card. So let's see why that nine of swords is in the mix. for Sagi. I really want to get over to that seven of wands as well. So why is the Nine of Swords here? Mm. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. So once again, more swords. We have like all the swords. We don't just have a couple swords here, Sagittarius. We have all the damn swords. Ten of Swords in reverse underneath the Nine of Swords. This is somebody that does not like how something went down. This could be representative of an ending or a loss that someone is feeling very deeply here feeling very, very deeply. Now, if this isn't resonating for you, that's great. I don't want these energies to come up for you in the coming days and weeks. But if you're not going through issues and pain, we have like all the cards that represent it. We have the Three of Swords, the Nine of Swords, now the Ten of Swords. Now, the good thing about this Ten of Swords is the fact that it's in reverse. It does talk about a healing journey and recovering from a big ending or a loss. That's a possibility. But when I see it under a card like the Nine of Swords, this person is not dealing with it well. So there could be someone who mentally and emotionally, they're a mess right now. Or there's something about this that they just can't move past right now for whatever reason. Once again, it is getting better. It's like we go from 10 to the 9, but we still got to go through 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way down to the Ace. So there is so much sword energy here. I would say if that's not your vibe, it could be someone you're linked to with that mental action and energy. They're overthinking, overthinking, thinking about every angle. Well, maybe I should have reacted like this. Maybe I should have acted like that. Maybe I should have reacted like this. Or what if they were doing that? Why'd they act like that? Why'd they say this? Like, these are the energies I'm picking up and feeling, Sagi. So if you've had any endings or loss, like, and you're affected, someone else might be even more affected than you. I would venture to say that. But let's move over to the Seven of Wands. Obviously, I would never say claim these energies. We might just be reading someone's feelings on a situation. If you are wondering how somebody is taking an ending or a loss, not well. I'll just say it like that. So we could be seeing warnings here. Let's see what's up with that seven of wands. Could be an explosive warning for sure, since it's all fire and air. Let's get one more card out before I really pass the final verdict. So why is that seven of wands? Eight of swords. They're all here in the upright. Okay. And the one thing I'll say about this Sagittarius is like something either did happen very suddenly or could happen very suddenly with how this feels to me. Because with all the swords we have happening here and this one wand energy, it's like a spark plug type of energy I'm picking up where it's like, oh, you just need a little spark to start the dominoes cascading. So I would say this is absolutely an explosive warning for the upcoming week. Okay, because with all the mental energy, it's just going to take one little spark for someone to really go over the top or go over the edge. Now, the Eight of Swords, similar to the Seven of Wands, is somebody that feels trapped, like there's nothing they can do about it. All right, well, yeah, that happened, but there's really nothing I could do about it. There's nothing I can do about it. All the stress, all the anxiety. So whether there was a loss or an ending or whatever it is, this energy is, I would say this isn't the healthiest energy. Sagittarius, whether it's yours or somebody else's, there needs to be an outlet here. And we've been seeing it since the very beginning here. And I was speaking about it with this Oracle card. Now we see it. Okay. We have like 30 swords here, 31 swords if you add them all up, right? We have the eight, we have the 10, we have the nine, we have the three, we have the page. So there's like 31 swords in this reading out of six cards. That's a lot. 
that's a lot okay so i would say this is an explosive warning that like if you've been thinking a lot or something could really like go over the top very very quickly okay and on this back end here the seven and the eight of swords like someone could be feeling trapped or like there's nothing they could do about it okay or there's nothing they could have done about it let's go through and do a quick recap here obviously this is an energy that you would want to claim this might just be someone's and like it might just be their vibe but before we get into the shadow card in position number one we have the page of swords with the three of swords somebody like putting a wall up putting their guard up afraid to be hurt they don't want to be hurt it's happened enough so it's like keeping someone at an arm's length but there is somebody like watching defensive but watching and i did say the talk the message someone wants to get something off their chest and i see why because moving to the center we have the nine of swords with the ten of swords in reverse pain loss ending and it's someone who's not dealing with it well so i did say like mentally or emotionally somebody could be a mess here with all this stuff okay like it's it's like the big hitters of pain are showing up in this spread which obviously you know i always like to pull silver lining or good things but i'm gonna give you the messages true to how they come out on the back end we have the seven of wands with the eight of swords in the upright yeah, someone's really going through one. Either they feel like there's nothing they could have done or there's nothing they can do about it. It is what it is. But I did say this gave me like that spark plug energy on the back end, like something, it just needs a little spark, just a little spark and all this energy is gonna start cascading. So if you've been overthinking or a lot of stuff on the mind, you need some sort of outlet for it, whether it is a talk or a communication or something else. Please take a screenshot if you wanna look into that further. Obviously, if it's going to make you more stressed, don't even look into them. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. Um, see what's in the shadows for Sagittarius. And yes, my friends, I always like to pull this card at the very end, whether it's something within you or something we don't quite see at the moment. It doesn't always have to be a challenge. So what's in the shadows for Saggy, please? Oh, and yes, if you've made it to this point in reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. My members are the ones that help me choose out costumes this year. And also there's a fresh all signs reading in the members area. Obviously no pressure. Uh, I always like doing things every week for my members. Let's get you a shadow card. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I mean, surprise, surprise. This energy is going to show up. We have the four of cups because although this is cups, cups generally represent emotion it's also an internal energy as well and you see the imagery here of this four of cups it's like little garfield is thinking about garfield is thinking about garfield there's like layers and layers of thought so there's a lot of complexity here within the whole reading from front to back from the first oracle all the way back to the shadow card which is just so much on the mind if you are stressed maybe you need like a rub down or a massage or something because there's the the stress is almost palpable here, Sagittarius, and I'm really hoping this is an energy that you're going through. It might just be somebody else for sure, but the Four of Cups is someone who is trapped in the mind, and we've been seeing these little undertones throughout the whole entire thing, and I just have to give the same exact advice. It is somebody that needs an outlet for this, because sometimes if you're so far, so deep within your mind, you miss opportunities that come your way. Okay, so don't miss opportunities that come your way because you're overthinking. Um, another thing with the Four of Cups, you need to find a way to possibly solve these energies if that's something you're going through, right? So whether it is a talk you need to have or some sort of expression. So, Saggy, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the October subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the September subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this week's Fire and Air readings. But for October... I'll be going back to one of the classics. I'll be giving away two copies of the Everyday Witches Tarot. It's one of the most beautiful decks out there. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things as always, my friends. First, you must be subscribed. Second, let me know down in the comments if there's a zodiac sign that you clash with. If so, which signs do you kind of bump heads with? You'll be entered to win, and at the end of October, your name will be announced in the community tab. My friends, as always, much love, and I'll see you next time.